So you're sitting at home, minding your own business, enjoying the evening with your family. You could be living up north, you could be living down south, you could be living anywhere in the world. And all of a sudden, you start getting these storms. Maybe it's an ice storm. Maybe it's a real severe thunderstorm. Lightning hits, trees come down. All of a sudden, as you all are enjoying your evening, what happens? What happens, folks? Well, yes, you forgot to pay the power bill. And now the power is out. Now the question is, do you have things? Do you have emergency power in case of one of these scenarios? And we're going to cover that today on Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And we're going to start with a true story as soon as I get back in just a second. So when the power goes out, do you have a power outage supply kit? One of the reasons this video is so long today is because I cover everything from soup to nuts, from things that you need so you can see, and everything else, if the power is out. A lot of great tips. I even show you and give you a demonstration of an emergency situation that is going on right now in my backyard and how I'm getting around the situation using my power bank and my 100 watt solar panel. So thank you for tuning in today to this video. I know this is a long video, but I appreciate everybody sticking around and watching it all the way to the end to see the emergency situation. There's a lot of stuff I cover in here, folks, from soup to nuts. I'm sure there's something in here for everyone, especially all you beginners. There's a lot in here for you. So welcome back to power outage survival supplies, things that you need to have on hand and some of the reasons why maybe you might want some of these things. Some of them are a little different than what other people may have shown you. And I'm going to tell you why. We're also at the very end. I'm going to show you what is going on right now in my backyard and where one of my main battery bank solar panels and everything else is coming in handy today. Now I'm shooting this in my garage. It is a hundred and some odd degrees outside here in Florida. So if you see me once in a while, I use this towel and I wipe my brow. Well, it is quite warm, but I do have battery powered and operated to charge on USB fan blowing on me to help me keep me cool. Because if I put on the big fans, you won't be able to hear me. You'll just hear that home. So here we go. True story. The other day I received a text message and uh, my daughter has started uh, prepping and she is looking to put together a power outage supply kit and she wanted to know what would be some good things to put in it. She went through and watched some of my videos and stuff and she sent me a list of some of the things that she already has, which is the basic necessities. Now, I'm gonna add to a lot of what she has already asked me and I already texted her back and gave her a lot more ideas of things that she wants to put into that that we're gonna cover today. All right, now I'm sure a lot of you people out there also are gonna run into these same type of situations. It all depends on where you live. See, if you live in the north, like she does, both my kids do, you know, they have more outages in the winter due to snow, ice, and that type of stuff, especially my daughter, because she lives up in the mountains. So they're more prone for that, okay? They do have a generator and um, that type of thing, you know, but their stove is electric. They don't have gas. So if you don't have a gas stove, that's a whole nother situation that you're gonna to have to cover. So we're gonna cover a lot of different products on this table, okay? And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start at that end and work our way this way, okay? So here we go, we're gonna to try to do this quick as possible. Everybody can get a pretty good idea of what you're gonna to wanna to have and what you're gonna to want to put in your emergency power outage supply kit. Now, the first thing we're going to do is, before we start over here, we're going to go down front real quick, and we're going to talk about some of those things. First off, what you want to make sure is, if you live in an area where, say, you are on a well-type system, 
all right? If the power goes out, you don't have water because you have to have power to power the well. So you want to make sure that you are storing these containers. That one there is a five, five gallon, and that is a seven gallon, all right? Now, you can store this water, and, you know, I mean... If you know a storm's coming, that's when you would fill these things up. I just wouldn't keep them full sitting around the house all times. I have these for my hurricane supplies. So when I know a storm's coming, I fill up both these containers so that I have plenty of water there besides all the drinking water that I do have inside the house. But having these are really great. And this one has the spout right here. Now, moving on over, let's pan around here, folks. All right. Your standard generator. Zoom that out just a little bit here. All right. <clears throat> that is a Durastar generator. It's a DS4000. All right. It has the uh, 220, the, the 110, has the breaker, has the voltmeter, and everything else. Um, it's a standard generator. There's nothing special about it, anything like that. One thing that you're going to make sure you do, that right there is an extra spark plug. You want to make sure that you have a spark plug remover. All right. The little tool. Now, in a lot of the generators, when you buy them, it comes with that. And down here, you want to make sure that you have extra oil, and that, that over there is a five-gallon gas can. Now, I store only four of those because I feel four is what I feel comfortable storing in my situation. When you're storing gasoline, you have to make sure that you can store it properly and safely, folks. So just remember that, all right? So getting yourself a generator is going to really benefit the whole situation because you can run quite a few things off your generator, your major appliances. Now let's move back to the table. All right, folks. So to go along with your generators, you want to make sure that you have some good extension cords. Good extension cords are something that are priceless. Don't buy cheap extension cords. Make sure you buy some heavy-duty ones. Those are the green ones and everything else. The one that's on the spool in the bottom is a 150 foot cord. This way I can position my generator, my gas generator, far enough away from my house where I don't have to worry about any type of carbon monoxide poisoning. Remember, never run a generator in your home, garage, or anything else. It has to be outside, away from the windows and everything else. If you got the windows open, you may have to close the windows wherever the generator is if you were smelling fumes. But this way you can run the cord inside, run it into a surge protector, plug other things into it, then you can run the cords from there and run them out and you can run your refrigerator, freezers, whatever else you may want to do, all right? And you can also tap in, if you have your surge protector, you can plug in multiple things that you need to charge, whether it be your cell phones, your radios, your lights, uh, fans, whatever runs on USB that you can plug in and charge. This way here, you have a way to charge multiple things at one time with your gas generator. Moving on down the road, all right? These great little first aid kits. I suggest everybody go on Amazon, pick these suckers up. It's a 300 piece first aid kit. They're less than 20 bucks. They have everything in it that you need in an emergency type situation. Yes, it's not a trauma kit or anything like that. That's nice, it's small, it's compact. It's got your bandages, it's got your gauze, tape, scissors. It's got all that kind of stuff in there as long as with your ibuprofen, Tylenol, um, Benadryl, it has motion sickness stuff in there, it has all your salves and stuff for your wounds to keep stuff clean. Everything is in this little thing. Buy these, you can put them into your power supply, emergency kit, you can put them into your emergency go bags, your backpacks, your vehicles, whatever else, 20 bucks, you can't beat it. All right, moving right down the line right here. I've talked about these, these are camp showers. Now, the beautiful thing with these camp showers are, is they're black. All right, they hold five gallons of water, folks, all right? Now, why is this so important to have in your emergency power outage kit? If your hot water tank is electric, you do not have hot water once whatever is in there is gone. So you could take these, fill this up with water, all right? Take this outside, hang it out in the sun. Within a few hours, it's gonna heat up. You're gonna have hot water, you can bring it inside. You can hang this in your shower off of the top right there and take yourself a 
nice hot shower. And after a few days of no power, well, you're probably going to be smelling really, really good if you get what I'm saying. So having some way to take a nice hot shower will be a military style shower for all you folks out there. You will turn the water on, you will get wet, turn the water off, lather up, turn the water on, and rinse off, turn the water off. You can also use this to use the hot water to save on your gas, propane, whatever else you may be cooking with, all right, that we're gonna get to in just a few minutes. And you could use this hot water to clean your dishes and that type of stuff. Wash up your kids, their face, their hands, whatever else. Let this do the job. Let Mother Nature give you the hot water. These things are great. Pick those up at Walmart. Radios, old style radios, new style radios, whichever kind of radio, you need some way to get information about what is going on in your area. Now this old style radio right here, I've had this thing for years, but it still works. All right. Now this one here, that is, this is an emergency radio. Got it off of Amazon for less than $30. It has a NOAA weather radio. It has a um, emergency band and everything that's on it. It is uh, rechargeable, so I can just plug it right into something, recharge it, and it does have an extended antenna. So if you really need to run the wire up to try to get some more, uh, you can do that or you can use the standard extended one here if you need to reach out and range and get more coming into your radio, depending on where you do live. But having a radio of some kind this way here, you can get emergency information about what has happened or what is going on. And maybe if you're being evacuated or whatever the situation may be. Glow sticks. Glow sticks come in handy for a lot of different things. They'd be great if you have kids and things of that nature. They'd last for a very long time. You can get these on Amazon, Walmart, Dollar Store. You can get them wherever. You can get them in multicolors and everything else, but you get yourself some glow sticks because they do come in handy. Now let's move on down to the lights. All right, now everybody knows that I am a huge advocate of having a headlamp. Headlamps are, I'm, they're the cat's meow folks. To be able to have both your hands free and still have light on the subject is priceless. If you do have kids and stuff and you have them hold the flashlight like this, well, I guarantee you they're gonna be doing one of these, looking at the ceiling or whatever else, and it's not, their light isn't gonna be on what you need it to be on that you're trying to do. So having the headlamp is key. Gear light, right out front. I've done reviews on the gear light. I can't say enough about that for the price. A metal, solid metal flashlight, waterproof and everything else for the price on Amazon. You can't go wrong. You get a two pack of them. They're great flashlights and they're very bright. These are just some more headlamps over here. Like I said, I love my headlamps. At the very end down there, those are Vaunt. These are little lanterns. This is a hard solid plastic, comes with the hangers right here. You can fold these down if you don't want to use them, but you can take and hang these bad boys right up in somebody's room or anywhere else. You can have a little light or a lot of light, whichever one that you do choose. They do run on four AA batteries and they do last quite a long time. When you order them, they come in that box right there. You get four of them for around 30 bucks. So that's really not too bad, 10 bucks a light. You're golden and you have light you can put throughout your home in your power outage supply kit. Now, I've always talked about getting some flashlights and stuff. You can go to Walmart, you can buy the Rayovacs, all right? They are a flashlight. That's all I can say. It's a flashlight, all right? You can get a three pack for like $12.97, comes with the batteries and everything else. You get three different sizes and everything. You know, if you the little ones that you can pick up are great for your kids. This way here, they feel important, folks. And you know, they got their own little flashlight. I guarantee you, make sure you have plenty of extra batteries of these because by morning they will be dead. All right. Now I've always talked about, make sure that you do have at least one good solid flashlight in your home. And I would suggest for most people to get the gear light because it's small, fits right in the palm of your hand, comes with the string and everything so you can put it around your wrist. But if you really want to go someplace, I like the Meg lights. The Meg lights have been around for years. They're a good, solid, sturdy flashlight, can be used for self-defense. You can get them in two cell, three cell, four cell, and everything else. This one is over 30 some odd years old and it still works just fine. All right, so having something like that. These right here, these like big 
lantern little lights. All right, now it is a hard, durable plastic one that is all sealed. It is supposed to be waterproof. It's supposed to float. Now, have I actually tested that to see if that actually has happened? No, I have not. But I position these throughout my home and different rooms and stuff so everybody knows where there is power and flashlights. Because you know what happens. No matter what the situation may be, you're gonna be right in the middle of doing something and all of a sudden the power goes out. And if it's nighttime, now you're stumbling around trying to find flashlights or this or that. So if you put one in every room where everybody knows where they are, they can walk over and grab it and then they have a flashlight. So this way here, nobody's tripping and falling and getting hurt. You're breaking out your first aid kit and you know it could be a very bad situation. So make sure you get these. They're 497, it comes with the battery. Can't go wrong, folks. You know, and if you're gonna buy those, pick up at least two, depending on how many of these things you have throughout your house, pick up at least two of these. So they usually sell them in a two pack. Pick up a two pack of the six volt. And this way here you have extra batteries in case they do go dead. I mean, they're only 497. I don't know really how long they're gonna last. Now, something else you really wanna think about. You get these at Walmart, all right? <clears throat> As you see, they have this little hook. They also have this magnet right on the back. These are 100 lumens. All right, that's pretty doggone bright. And the magnet is beautiful. And then if you had to work on your car or work on something, you know, you flip it up and you have your little hook that you can hang it. It does have the little light at the very bottom. All right, just some ideas. Very cheap, very inexpensive for a lot of people that you can do a lot of these different things. Now, something I want to touch on real quick, tea lights battery powered tea lights. Now most guys out there, if you're single, you probably do not own any tea lights in your house. But if you are married, or if you are women watching this video, you know what these are. These are child friendly. You don't have to worry about your kids getting burnt or anything else. Now, here's the real trick. The white ones last a lot longer than the amber ones. So if you're gonna be buying these for an emergency type situation, buy the white ones because they run on these nickel sized batteries. You can get a 50 pack of them for $9.97 on Amazon. And these things will last for quite a, quite a few days. They, they, these have a six hour timer, all right? So you could turn them on in the evening. You know, if you say you had stairs, you could line the stairs, all right? So if somebody's going up and down the stairs, they can see the stairs, they can see where they're walking. You know, I mean, you could put them around little doorways or something, they're so small, but they put out a lot of light, folks. Now, if you want the amber ones, if you want to be a little romantic or something, if it's just, say, you and your wife or girlfriend or whatever, then you want to get the amber ones, so be it. They're just not going to last long. You know, we'll keep this family friendly here. All right. So go always go with the white ones. All right. <clears throat> now in this box right here, this is regular tea lights. There's 300 tea lights in here, six hours a piece. All right. Now, the reason I bought these, I bought these a year and a half ago. There is an oven out there that I haven't purchased yet, all right? But that oven will run off these tea lights. Now, if you go on and you do some research, you can cook with tea lights, folks. You can go on Amazon, you can buy these trivets where these tea lights fit in there and a frying pan actually fits on top of it. That's right, you can cook with those tea lights. You just have to be very careful because you have an open flame, especially if you have kids. I keep reiterating that because I want people to be safe and your preps and be safe with what's going on because of your situation. You have no power and everything else. If you start lighting a lot of candles and you have kids, you could be setting yourself up for a bad scenario. So, so this is something you'd wanna do if say your kid's a little bit older and maybe they're not playing with the fire as much because we all know how kids like to play with fire. So let's move right down, down the line. Battery banks. All right, these fit great into your power outage supply kits. This is a single shot. So basically this will charge your cell phone once. All right, this here is a double shot. So it'll charge say your cell phone and maybe your headlamp or two cell phones. But this one's solar. So you can take it outside, lay it down in the sun. It's gonna charge itself throughout the day. Then you can recharge whatever it is you wanna charge. All right, now something you really wanna think about is you could get battery banks. Now remember people stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna show you what's going on outside and how I'm using my battery bank, 100 watt solar panel 
and everything else for my emergency situation. What you're gonna see in just a few minutes, but this one right here, I got this at Walmart, okay? It's a Go Power Plus, all right? It's only a 100 watt little battery bank, all right? It's 100 watts, but you could charge quite a few things on this. It's not gonna really run uh, any major lights or something, maybe you got a small light or one of those type of things. I would use this mostly to say recharge maybe my battery banks, my headlamp, my cell phone, those type of things. But I did get this on clearance when they had them clearance for half price because they're regular $99.97 and they had them for $49.97 a while back at Walmart. So you know what? I picked one up so I figured for half price, 100 watts for 50 bucks, I'll take it all day long. Now, thinking about batteries. All right, make sure you're buying the batteries that you are going to be using. If, you are, if you're not gonna be using AAA, then just don't buy AAA. Don't waste the money. Make sure you take an inventory of what kind of batteries you need and how many you're going to need if you say you have the lanterns and say like these headlamps, you put batteries in, uh, radios, uh, flashlights, whatever it may be. Make sure that you do have the proper batteries and everything else. You can buy one of these cases on Amazon, very cheap, uh, less than 12 bucks. And when you do buy the case, you know, it does come with the battery tester. So you can keep testing your batteries and everything else and making sure that they're good. When you're buying your batteries, you know, I, I would prefer to buy either Duracell or Energizer. It depends on which one is on sale and I can get a, the most for bang for my buck. Now, if you are on a tight budget, and say you know a storm is coming, whether it be a blizzard, whether it be an ice storm, whether it's a hurricane, anything else. If you can only afford, folks, if you can only afford to go to the dollar store and buy batteries there, yes, they're not going to last you 10 years or whatever, all right? But they'll get you through the storm. You can go in there, buy yourself some batteries to make sure you have enough to run your flashlights, um, anything like a radio, so those type of odd things, you're going to save yourself a lot of money and at least you're prepared. There's nothing wrong with having to buy those batteries. Sometimes I buy them. I put them into like little dinky things, you know, that run around the house. I mean, because I'd rather waste the money on those, you know, and just use a dollar and spend it, you know, you know, for like little trinkets that the wife has or something, you know, that light up or something, you know. That's just me. So you also want to think, well, you know, the power's out and everything else and you're sitting there and you've got a couple of these bad boys going on your kitchen table. If you have kids, you probably have games. If not, you might not have games. So you might want to pick yourself up a deck of playing cards, maybe some dice, learn a couple dice games. Very easy to do. You can also go and pick up one of these. All right, if you're a single couple or a married couple, all right, 88 great conversation starters for husbands and wives. This was given to us uh, quite a few years ago. It is actually a lot of fun and uh, you can have a really good time in a bad situation to take your mind off of what is going on. Because sometimes you need to do that, folks. All right, so you could do this here, you know, got your lights, everything else, fans. Now, these little fans right here, these would be great for your kids, all right? If you have one of these, put it on their little nightstand or something next to their bed, having somewhat of a little breeze blowing on them, especially, boy, that feels good, considering it's 100 some odd degrees in my garage. Especially if it is hot out, having some way that charges right back up with solar that you can plug USB right into these rechargeable batteries and keep these fans going is a beautiful thing. You can pick up all kinds of these fans and everything else on Amazon. Really, they're cheap, folks. You could also go ahead and you could pick up one of these. Now, I've had this Coleman uh, fan for quite a few years. It's actually made for a tent, but here's a trick, all right? It does have a hook. Can you see that? This is what I did for my mother-in-law before I had these fans and stuff, a few years ago when we had a hurricane, and at night she was just dying. It was still like 80 some odd degrees outside, no wind, windows open, but there was just no breeze. So what I did was, is I put a screw in the wall above her bed. 
I took a pair, uh, some cordage, I tied the cordage around here, around the loop, and dangled this down about, if this was her head on her pillow, about that far away. And turn on the fan, you get a nice breeze, and she was able to get some sleep and be comfortable. And that's the whole trick, folks. You gotta be able to be comfortable and survive the situation at hand, which in this situation, we're talking power outages. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run outside. I'm gonna show you what the battery bank, the 100 watt solar panel, rock piles is all doing out there because that is where the emergency situation is right at this point in time, folks. So real quick, I didn't mention any food or anything. I did mention some way to store your water. Your food is something that you really have to pay attention to and you have to make sure that you are already prepping all your food. Your food should be the number one thing that you take care of first in my book. Make sure that you have some way to purify water. Make sure that you have some way to make sure that you have food, whether it be canned goods, you're doing your own canning, dehydration, whatever it may be. Vacuum sealing, using Mylar bags, canning jars, Make sure your food is all set. Add these products as you do go along if you find good deals. Okay, folks, I know this video has run a little bit long. I had a lot of stuff I wanted to cover. I wanted to make sure that you people understand the importance. Food is number one. All the rest of this is number two. You have to start with the food water first. Make sure you have all that taken care of and then start doing all these products here unless you run across good deals and then pick these products up so let's go outside and see what the emergency is out there because that is even hotter than here wait till you see this folks all right folks as you can see there's my 100 watt rock piles solar panels all right the cords are running up here plug in the back of my rock piles 300 watt bring it down front see what we can see if you can see any numbers I'm not really sure so this is the scenario this battery bank is plugged into this here fan the reason it's plugged into this fan is because this outlet and another one that's just like it on the other side of that wall right there are not working they're not gfi i think they might have got wet and they either shorted out tried all the breakers nothing's working so you need this fan it's 105 degrees out here all right and without this fan without my wind machine all right it's unbearable plug this in yesterday just to the ba battery bank and it lasted for four hours so today i plugged it into the solar panels which have been out here since eight o'clock this morning. And right now it is 2.45 p.m. And the full charge on my battery bank is 12.6 volts. It is down to 11.7 volts. And it's been running since eight o'clock this morning. That's pretty good, folks. And I'm running a fan, a big fan, not a little fan. All right, I'm survival preparedness for beginners. Just goes to show you, some emergencies are more than just a natural disaster. Without that fan, there'd be no setting outside. You got what I'm saying? Always be prepared. Thrive to survive. And until the next time, I will catch all of you on the flip side. Stay safe, everyone. Mm -hmm.